video, we're going to talk about what are called colligative properties. So there are certain properties of solution that depend only on the concentration of particles in the solution. So how many particles are in a given volume of the solution. And those properties for this class are solution boiling point, solution freezing point, and solution vapor pressure. So let's start with freezing point. The, what you need to know about the freezing point when we're talking about colligative properties is that the freezing point of a solution is always lower than the freezing point of the pure solvent. So we call that freezing point depression. The freezing point gets lowered, depressed, when you add something to it. And the example of that is when we put salt on streets to melt ice or snow. It lowers the freezing point of the salt slash ice mixture it looks like I left a slash out of the PowerPoint there. But what that means is when we add the salt, it lowers the freezing point. And that's why they salt the roads before it snows or does freezing rain or anything like that around here because it lowers that freezing point of that ice by a few degrees. And typically that's enough for us to get around on the roads or else at least melt a good bit of it. Um, so you, you're pretty familiar with that. Another one is solution boiling point. And what happens with the boiling point when you add something to it, uh, to a uh, solvent, is that that boiling point of that solution is always going to be higher than the boiling point of the pure solvent. And we call that boiling point elevation. So the boiling point goes up when you add something to it. And that's true for things like sugar, water mixture. So if you've ever made candy, um, water boils at 100 degrees C. Uh, typically with candy recipes, there is a lot of sugar and a little bit of water, and so that sugar, as it dissolves, makes the boiling point of the water higher, and sometimes that boiling point's as high as 150 degrees C. Now, people always ask about the, the salt in the pasta, the uh, adding salt to make the water boil faster. And this tells me that that would not, uh, it would elevate the boiling point, so it would actually take more time to reach the boiling point of the water. And if you added enough to really affect the boiling point, it would probably make your pasta taste really gross. First, we need to talk about vapor pressure, and then we need to talk about the effect that adding a solute to a solvent has on it. So when we have a liquid or solid, there are molecules that are escaping into the gas phase. They come away from the surface of the uh, liquid and you can think about that like evaporating water when there's a puddle out on the street. It's The water's not at its boiling point. You can step in it and not get burned, but the water will evaporate into the air. So those molecules are leaving the surface of the water. And so the vapor pressure is the maximum pressure of the compound in the gas phase above the liquid. So and what happens when we add a solute to a solvent is that the vapor pressure of the solvent in a solution is always lower than that of the pure solvent. So if you look at the picture, the little uh, jar here on the left has a, a little pressure gauge, and this is the pure solvent. And you can see on the right the, the little yellow balls in there, those are the, the solute in a solution. So this is pure solvent, this is the solution. And what happens is the vapor pressure of the solvent in the, is always, the vapor pressure for the solvent in the solution is always lower than that of the pure solvent. It's, it's easier for those particles to escape to, into the atmosphere. The last thing we need to talk about in terms of the colligative properties is that they really only depend on the number of particles in the solution. So it doesn't matter what the particles are, whether it's something ionic or covalent, but we need to talk a little bit about how that works. So the freezing point of a 0.1 molar sucrose solution is the same as 0.1 molar glucose. They both have the same number of molecules of sucrose or glucose, so that is the same in terms of the freezing point because the, the number of particles is not changing. When you look at the second one, it says the freezing point of a 0.2 molar sucrose solution is the same as 0.1 molar sodium chloride. Now remember that when sodium chloride goes into a solution, 
it splits, it dissociates into sodium and chloride ions. So for every sodium chloride formula unit, there are two ions produced in solution. So you have twice as many particles because those sucrose molecules just stay the same as they did before you put them into water. They're, they have water molecules around them, but they are still attached. They don't ionize or dissociate. Um, and then if you look at the third example, it's a similar issue. A 0.3 molar sucrose solution has the same freezing point as a 0.1 molar solution of calcium chloride. Calcium chloride, its formula is CaCl2. So when it dissociates, it dissociates into one calcium and two chloride ions. And so it has three times as many particles as a sucrose solution. So you would only need one third of the concentration to get the same effect. And some places actually use calcium chloride as the salt on their roads because you can buy less of it uh, as opposed to sodium chloride because they end up with more particles and so it ends up being less expensive. They don't have to spend as much money. And I know you guys know with the snow that we've had in the last few years, that can add up. So we'll talk about this a little bit more in class and I will look forward to seeing you then.